that I don't think she realizes I wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for doors that she's opened uh, for myself within the profession. Um, she mentioned that I was just in Australia. I was doing a keynote speech in Australia. And a young man asked me, well, did you ever imagine yourself up here being a keynote speaker for the joint convention between Australia and New Zealand? And I brought a plaque from 1973 high school where I was failed, I failed speech class. Uh, um, I did, I was a comedian, because that's what I'm good at, is making people laugh. So I did a, a speech at the end where I passed speech class, got a D minus, and on the back of my teacher wrote, don't do this for a living, and he said that. So, <laughs> so I, brought, I brought it with me, <coughs> going, don't ever, ever let other people judge your destiny. And, and so what happened to me, I was a paramedic firefighter, making maybe $11 an hour in the uh, early 90s, and I was not doing well in that profession. So I took massage as a hobby. Uh, Linda doesn't know this, but I had no money. I, I quit, doing, quit being a paramedic. I had no income. So I would go to the FSMTA convention, and I would sit back in the room and see people like Mike McGill and Petty teaching, and Benny Vaughn teaching, and I would be a, a CU monitor because I couldn't afford to take the classes. I would be sleeping in a room with six guys with sleeping bags just crashing out. So, so, so this was the like, early 90s. So then all of a sudden, um, one of my clients, uh, Anthony Robbins, I was working on him, and he, he had me write some goals. They were very infinite goals at the time. They were, um, I want to speak at our local YMCA. So he wrote a goal, had just returned from Australia. He said, someday uh, you're going to be a keynote speaker in Australia. I was 19 years ago. So what it taught me was, number one, surround yourself with great people like this. The, the people, when they go, um, why do you travel 45 weekends a year? This is my family. This is my extended friendship family. A lot of people don't realize the depth of our, our friendships and the people that come together as industry leaders, how much we care about each other. So I said, first and foremost, you got to care about people. Uh, money will manifest if you make enough difference in other people's lives. Um, moving forward, I think in the early 90s, Tony Robbins inspired me to do a cruise. He said, bring on the who's who of the industry. So we brought on Tiffany Theo. She didn't even like cruising, but thanks to Linda. <laughs> thanks to Linda, she came, did our keynote. So by association, as I hung out with Tiffany Fields and Barry Goldman and Tom Myers and, and, and Aaron Mattis and all of the experts in the, the who's who of the industry, you started to think different. So all of a sudden it was a thing, all right, let's not think poverty conscious thoughts. So let's think about setting goals, surrounding yourself with great people, and, and doing something different with them. So when I do my keynote speeches now at most of the major conventions in the US, I, I use a slide that says, choose your thoughts carefully. Your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions. Your actions become your reality. And your reality becomes your destiny. And the other thing I, I've done is, uh, through some Christian counseling, my, my pastor Paul said, integrity is something you have. So as you look at things like honesty, values, and the people you surround yourself with, you build, you build a great team, you build a great network. So now that I've got 280 teaching assistants in 15 countries around the world, and I look back as a massage student thinking I was barely surviving, you know, living in a $200 apartment, splitting the rent, and this was the early 90s. So I think what, what's happened is a lot like Michael McGillicuddy, the gentleman on the end, he took me under his wings as my mentor. Aaron Mattis was my mentor, Michael was my mentor. And, and Linda opened so many doors, she got me to speak at the FSMTA's chapter meeting. I did a most motivational speech, which then got me to do a keynote speech, which now I've done in maybe five different countries around the world. So what I really want to leave you with is, is really set high goals, write them down. Surround yourself with great people. Hang out with people that lift you up, not people that are vampires, that kind of stuff. You want, you want to try to nurture those people. And the final story, now that I'm thinking back to my student days, I was the chair of the National Sports Massage Council in 1995. A young man, a student like yourself, came up to me. I'm in the middle of a, of a meeting, doing an examination, certifying for sports massage, and I'm like going 100 miles an hour. He goes, Mr. Kuslowski, can, can you just have lunch with me? So for some reason, I said, follow me to, to the cafeteria. So I motivated him to set goals. He I said, go to the Olympic Games. This is how you get there. And two years later, he comes back and he goes, thanks to you. I went to the Olympic Games and I left there. He goes, I now have a successful practice. He goes, the day that you sat down with me, I was going to end my life. So what you realize is that there's people that, like, your, like myself, growing up in the profession, struggling, that just need someone like the people on this panel to kind of lift you up and, and help you achieve your dreams. So, so coming from a poverty-conscious life and then living my dream and teaching around the world and being with great people like this is what you should strive towards. Because it's, it's the people that you surround yourself with that make you who you are.
And, and one thing I always do in my classes, I credit every one of my teachers. This is Aaron Maddox for you. This is, Aaron, this is what I love, Michael versus Michael. When you do that, and you respect the people that got you where you're at, you will continue to be more successful. So set your goals, surround yourself with great people. Uh, don't set infinite goals because you won't work hard to achieve those. But most of all, I, I, I thank God every day for the opportunity to be on the road 45 weekends. You have the opportunity to hang out with the friends and members that have gotten me into this chair. So um, I just wanted to, Linda doesn't know this, but I remember one time to set this up. We're in Florida, Tiffany Fields. We're doing a fundraiser for Tiffany Fields for Ashley Montague. Do you remember that? I had no money. And so I said, Linda, could I just crash in your closet with an absolute bag? I told him it was a so, sweet so, and I had a little so, in there. <laughs> so Linda, can you, yeah, so, so it's, you know, when you want something bad enough, you're going to go out and you're going to do what it takes to get to it. So I'm, I'm honored now to teach at the American Massage Conference, World Massage Conference, every major convention I was doing, Australia, New Zealand, Fiji, Ireland, Scotland. But if I had thought that sitting in this chair as a student and I hadn't changed my thoughts about what's possible, then none of, none of this would be up. So, so it's an honor and privilege to be with my friends, uh, our family, and inspired colleagues of mine.